special interview because obviously number one veer you've won an emmy which is such a huge deal so firstly congratulations to you thank you thank you it's so wonderful and of course we have someone who is of course a mutual friend of both of us of course kavi yes. shastri who is a phenomenal talent uh, and you both have also sort of worked together on many occasions you've what founded india's first comedy company which is so huge um, yes so i think i want to know um behind the journey behind this laughter actually veer i'm going to begin with you when did you first discover this sort of comedic talent within you i think comedians are either the most popular kid in school or the least popular kid in school and i was definitely the least popular kid in school uh, ironically the most popular kid in school also became a comedian but um i i just i've always been kind of overactive imagination and then when you put me on a stage since i was 4 years old which uh, the first time i played a tree in the background of a school play uh, just kind of waving side to side but i was like this feels good um and i've always been just kind of comfortable on a stage whether you're funny or not uh, the jury is still out on that one <laughs> i've days of the week where i'm like yeah i don't know uh, but i think you if you are accustomed to making an ass of yourself on stage really really early uh, you know that helps push you towards comedy sure what about you kavi veer uh, you know when it comes to your craft as an actor i, I think it's very interesting because i remember you, my first experience of seeing you was actually in namaste london um yeah, yeah. and I, I, remember- played, i played prospective groom number 2 <laughs> so that was really fun actually but yeah. again you know when you you've obviously seen struggling like you're struggling is from a very very long time what do you think that has really taught you a lot about life and perhaps this industry and how fragile and you know very difficult it can be i look i mean let's be clear engineering is difficult you know being a doctor is difficult flying a plane is difficult a comedian works 2 hours a day this is barely a job you know and for those 2 hours you get to stay in a nice hotel and people give you laughter and i i don't know i'm not you know i i feel like there's always a tendency to fetishize our struggles you know uh, where are dekho meri struggle or main kabhi apne struggle ke mare mein you know etc etc i'm not one of those people I, and I, i think that comes from a starting off with a significant amount of privilege and b um I think I've learned more from failure than I have from struggle you know and failure sometimes comes post struggle mm. you know when you're taking big swings and they don't work out that teaches you more right and what about you kavi because obviously life was great when obviously rishad.com happened for you um you know i mean you became a, a sensation overnight you know and you were literally a heartthrob and it was a big brand that you were working with but of course you know success has obviously not been stable in your life in that sense as well so i mean what has really helped you to i guess stay focused and not lose track of things um i think uh, look uh, when uh, the journey for rishta began and it was uh, the whole wireth boom happened um you know uh, i remember actually weirdly uh, it was veer that i uh, i kind of consulted uh, in he was the first person i actually told that i got the gig um and he was like man just go for it and do it i think what's what's kept me on path very strangely is my journey with veer you know is uh weird as comedy it is zazu production it is everything that we've done it's always kept me stable as we go it always brings you back to us um you know uh, uh cuz during rish that it was a crazy time you know um and there was things that what happening that i'd never seen before in my life i've never felt before in my life um but you know coming back to weirdas and and just kind of chilling with veer and and kind of working together just kept my feet on the ground or at at every post and that's i think that stability of having one stable thing in my life um has kind of kept me going throughout the the ups and the downs you know uh, throughout that entire phase sure rasi i just want to point out this is the most ironic conversation in the world because we're talking about you being a heartthrob but you are five pixels uh... <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to see Thank if i can you. get better network before you ask me the the next question yeah, yeah. you look like a vid- video game character please let's do the uh, the hard top <laughs> question okay where people can see your beautiful face man right <laughs> huh right 
no, I'll, 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 I'll just I'll, I'll lock and lock back in. Give me one second. Yeah. Sure. One second. All right. So I think Veer, uh, let's talk a bit more about this whole Emmy thing because I feel yeah. like obviously it's it's a major it's a major achievement. Um, it's certainly not just because it's you know Western approval or anything like that, but obviously you're an independent artist who's had to really, like we said, you know, really work hard to get to where you are. Uh, but what, in a more perhaps um, on a more profound level, what significance does this actual have? You know, this award have on you? Well, there are there are stories of global, or at least my voice can be global. You know, uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand how the international Emmys come about, right? Which is there are the prime time American Emmy Awards, which is their academy votes on things, but the international Emmys is jurors from across the world vote on content from across the world. So there are a thousand submissions from Asia Pacific in the Asia Pacific region. An Asia Pacific jury will narrow it down to five to 50 people mm. that they think are the best. But then that those 20 people from Asia Pacific will watch all the other regions, ka all the content. So mm. a guy from Asia Pacific is watching, you know, a hundred pieces of content from across the world. So, an award like this actually isn't a Western award. It's very much sort of a global award. Um, and so, uh, because, you know, I, I remember walking into the cocktail uh, the first night and even after we won, meeting a juror from Japan or a juror from Korea saying, I loved landing and I watched it as part of my jury duties. You know, so in that sense, it's nice to feel assured that uh, it's language agnostic and that your voice is global. You know, I was nominated with... Uh, an Argentinian show and uh, a Latin American show. The last time I went there, I lost to a French language show. So it's nice to feel like you have a global voice, if nothing else. No, oh. and obviously you did a, sh a show recently called Fresh Off the Boat, which was actually quite yeah. telling about the whole migration story um, yeah. within uh, the West of Indians within the West. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I think you've obviously had pretty much that experience as well of you being an Indian growing up outside and then coming back to India again. Um, so again, when it talks about migration, when we talk about these things, uh, what sort of areas do you tap into as an artist to really bring that authentic voice per se? I mean, you just have to go with what your gut is, but you know, I haven't migrated per se. I'm just, a, you know, I travel a lot, but I still live okay. in India, right? So um, I've never actually migrated, migrated, but I think you, as a comedian, when I come into an America or when I come into the UK, like I'm coming to the UK in London, uh, you know, in, in December. So being an outsider and being a blatant outsider, I almost have more freedom than the local Indian comp in London in that I'm not politically aligned. I'm not ideologically aligned. I'm not racially aligned. I'm not religiously aligned. I'm a, and these are four things that tend to dictate what you find funny and what you don't find funny, uh, largely in the world. So I almost have the freedom to show you the UK yourself and a mirror to you more than a local UK comic was because I'm blatantly not from there in the agenda as mentioned. So in that sense, I think it gives you a global voice being an outsider. Sure. And I think that's a fair point. But then also when obviously, because... I think society right now, especially post COVID, I think everyone's become, I think emotions have heightened a lot in people. And I feel like, you know, anything that gives anyone a sense of hope or a sense of belief, um, that really has become something which I think people have really held on to, you know. And I think uh, when you as a comic sort of perhaps make comments or sort of pass, uh, make gigs on that, do you also feel like somewhere in you as well, there is a sense of responsibility to ensure that, you know, if you say something, you can reaction a reaction. And can you understand sometimes why there is perhaps an knee reaction to certain gigs as well? Well, I mean, if you're coming to my stand-up show, there are 800 knee reactions uh, in 90 minutes, right? So it's you and me in a room and I'm saying things and whether you're laughing or not laughing, it is essentially a knee reaction. Laughter is a surprise uh, for the body, right? So it is a, it is a back and forth in that. And uh, I think comedians have had to evolve to the fact that the audience has a voice that's as loud as yours, right? Now, um, as long as that voice is respectful and within the realms of feedback and criticism, I think there's something to be learned from that voice, you know? So I'm, I'm not, um, I welcome a reaction. I welcome a conversation with my audience, you know? 
Sure, sure. Um, Kavi, I would love to talk because I was talking about migration and uh, I think you definitely sort of uh, represent that. I think the one thing that when you came on screen is when you spoke in Hindi, I was like, I don't know how good it is. Like, it doesn't sound like very angry <laughs> with the way he was speaking. You're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, when you, obviously, uh, for you to really adapt, I mean, because I know culturally you've always been quite connected. Um, but again, mm-hmm. when you, I mean, but when you're living in another country, obviously it's a different ball game altogether. So, did you find it a bit of a a bit of a challenge, let's say, to really adapt and get yourself into the sort of Indian lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, and I, I still I still struggle with it. It's not, and I'm what uh, I've been here 15 years plus, uh, and I still struggle to try and get my head around it. Um, you know, it's because I I grew up in London. I grew up with certain conveniences that you don't get here. Um, but equally, uh, would I be able to move out of anywhere but India now? It would be very tough, you know, uh, to do that as well. Because you kind of make a home. Uh, it, it's become home. And the madness that is India um, is it's it's um, it's uplifting as well. Like, um, and I'm sure Veer will be able to say this, like, you know, uh when you travel outside india you know the, the, when you come into india when you come into mumbai it's so mad and everything's so bustling and everything's so happening that you're like man i need a break i just need to get out of the city for for a day you know and just get some fresh air and and you know breathe but the moment you out you miss there's a there's a uh there's a pulse about the city that you miss you know uh, and i think that um yeah. you kind of just adapt to where you are and you adapt to your surroundings and it's much like being an actor right like you you go into different sets every single day uh you you perform different scenes every day um and that's kind of been my journey living in india as well you know um which is every day is different every day is a a new challenge uh and just when you feel like you've gone over one hurdle there's another one there um but that's also the magic of the place as well so india has never made me feel like i'm an outsider um uh, maybe it's myself that made myself feel like i was an outsider and then realize i'm actually not an outsider everyone's an outsider and we all live in one place in unison with each other you know um and then if you can get on board with that uh, then you're you're flying in this in in this city very rightly put actually but i think um mera ek funda hai actually and i think mm-hmm. maybe it's because i love mera naam joker so much and i love the uh, Joaquin phoenix film so much but uh, i do believe mm-hmm. that art especially regardless of which format it is whether it's comedy whether it's drama i feel it does come from a place of a pain you know of sorts whether it's emotional mental mm-hmm. physical any kind of pain and i think that automatically transcends because it's the sense of vulnerability which you automatically translate right as an artist so we where mm-hmm. you know i mean again i asked you this as your first question but i would love to elaborate this a little further how have you learned to deal with pain especially after becoming you know a comedian and becoming an art comic artist as well especially and do you feel like a lot of it has stemmed from a place of severe vulnerability that you've been through in your life well i mean look anything comes from pain right engineering comes from pain certainly and uh, you know uh, 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 you know being a lawyer comes from pain so uh, i think the the thing that you can learn with art is never to victimize or to lie analyze your pain to not peddle your pain but to convert your pain into something that might ease somebody else's and you do that by really micro focusing on craft on the craft of it all comedians have a lovely job in that the best day of your life and the worst day of your life both end in the same destination which is a joke mm-hmm. right so you can say oh i got fired today and my house burned down and if you're a comedian you're sitting there going this will be a good 2 minutes some day <laughs> you know it'll be a good 2 minute bit or i got married to the to the person of my dreams and we won the lottery and again you're just going this might be one and a half minutes of material so you get to almost kind of pull yourself out of your own life and view your life as a performance uh, or as a piece of art that you are now channeling for the audience because more so than film and more so than music comedy directly mines from life you know uh a filmmaker still has the luxury of fantasy and fiction and this never happened comedy is really the only job where the job is to live and the job is to say yes to a lot of things in life so that you can mine it for material so in that sense you you it makes you more self aware of your pain and it makes you uh, more cognizant of your pain but it also makes you less likely to wallow in your pain because you're quick to write about your pain Hmm. It's very observational, isn't it? I think that's one yeah. thing that I have I have noticed. But 
I think also, uh, especially in Indian cinema, I feel like for the longest amount of time, there's been this stigma attached. But for example, if you do a comedy film, like you would often be bracketed and, you know, stereotyped into only simply doing comedy films. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a very and it's the toughest art to master because to make someone laugh, it's it's extremely difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But do you feel like you both have had to really fight that stereotype, especially with the roles that you've had, you know, but you've been offered with? You know, when I did the 22nd of November, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I knew it was coming. You know, that film, 4th June, was, uh, I don't know, man, you, you know, you have to, like, Shastri and I met his background extras on Love Ajkal, you know what I mean? And so yeah. for the first for the first half of your career, you're just taking whatever's coming at your doorstep because you want opportunity. And then after that, you realize that, oh, if you're not part of this uh, upper echelon of this industry, you have to create your stuff, yeah. right? And then thankfully a Netflix and an Amazon and a YouTube and all of this stuff show up where they start empowering voices like yours. So the the comedy wala comedy he karta hai kind of with this thing i think that's kind of vanished now it's, it's a bit yeah, of an invalid yeah, thing okay. anymore luckily because of the advent of like otts you know in an ott this thing mm. uh, uh, and other gaurav can head up a, a white tiger you know what i mean and uh, you know uh, a rajkumar rao can can do a badhai do you know uh, etc so i don't feel like that is the case anymore and apar shakti khurana can head up a jubilee you know, mm-hmm. it's really a great time to be mm-hmm. an actor in that sense. Sure. Uh, I, I, would you like to add anything to that? <laughs> no, I, I think I think I think uh, V is absolutely on point. Um, you know, I think um, like uh, going back to when I started on TV, there was a big thing about you know if you're on TV, you can't do film. If you're in film, you can't do TV, and it yeah. was it was all muddled, right? Uh, and I think that's a that's a time that's definitely passed, you know, because everyone's doing everything now, you know, uh, and you no longer need to look like a hero to be a hero and you can look like a hero and be a villain, you know. Um, so it's um, the, as we quite rightly say, with, with sort of OTT kind of coming in. Um, it's really changed the way everyone looks at any content anymore. Now it's yeah. not about um, what you look like or who you are. It, it, or what skills you have it's do you suit the role and and then content yeah. has now become king you know what i mean and that's a really nice place to be in sure and i think i also remember watching one of uh, your stand ups actually i think it was one of your initial netflix ones Veer, where you uh, <laughs> were talking about masti and yeah yeah i love how you made a joke on that because actually ironically when i first spoke with kavi i had written an article which was my first ever professional article it was five reasons to watch masti zade and oh, it, nice. <laughs> and it was quite ironic when you were like sort of joking about that i was like oh my goodness like you know as a as a creative no matter how much you know we try to really um uh, sort of do things you're always compelled to sort of take up decisions but how do you again uh, sort of look at those decisions not with regret, but actually have that comical because I feel it takes a big person to really laugh at, you know, certain decisions that you're not proud of. I, you know, the, the decisions that I'm not proud of actually nobody knows about. You know what I mean? That's just life. We all go through life making decisions that we're not proud of, right? The, the, but, um, I don't, man. Like I'm, I, I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in terms of, uh, for me, it's about what's next, and it's about what's tonight, and what's tomorrow, and baby steps. So I, I don't really look back and have to come to terms with uh, old decisions or bad decisions. You know, like uh, I'm lucky in that I've seen the the pendulum swing both ways for me about twice. You know, where you're you're hot one second and you're not hot one second and then you're hot one second again and then you're not hot one second and then you win an Emmy and then you you know a, a movie crashes and all of that stuff and you you learn to just kind of go I'm talented either way and my talent will find its way to an audience mm-hmm. you know one way or the other so you you have to reinforce your own conviction that's about it sure I think we are being told to wrap up so before I finish um ah, would love yes. to know any upcoming projects view that you have and Kavi also if you could just answer that question that I asked you right. well. I'm co-directing a movie yeah, with yeah. Shastri, so that's uh that's happening soon uh we just created a show together that will be out soon uh and hopefully I'll do a project in America that's it oh wow that's amazing yeah. um Kavi what about you um I asked him about regret uh, 
Uh, regrets, look, uh, not really, man. Like, you, I, I just think that, like, at the end of the day, uh, every move you make and everything you do, uh, and especially when it comes to your career, it's right in that moment. And maybe that moment didn't work for you. Um, but it doesn't make it doesn't make that a, a wrong moment. You made the right decision in that moment. That that moment could have been for money. That moment could have been for fame. That moment could have been for a role you really liked or a person you really wanted to work with. You know, um, but it doesn't make it a regret. I just think it makes it a choice you made in that moment that didn't work. And then you move on and you move on to the next and you keep moving and keep moving and keep moving until you know it all gets I don't know non regretful if that's a yeah. good way to put it. But um, you know, uh, and yeah, I think that's that's kind of. I don't really have. I don't hold life with regrets. It's not life's too short, way too short. So, right. One quick last thing. I know. Yeah, yeah. Make make journalist or I'm kafi lalji hote information ke liye as you already know. So sure. <laughs> please, bata do. Ye film kya hai? What can you tell us? Whatever you can tell us, a little bit. Not come. a damn it's thing. Cool. Uh, like yeah, zero. Not we yet. can tell you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was so wonderful. Look, thank you so much, Veer and Pavi, for joining me. I mean, honestly, this is so, so special because, um, you know, it's it's very wonderful to have uh, this conversation with two, three of us, actually, who are independent content creators. And, you know, yeah. one is literally now a globally huge star. Kavi is an absolute heartthrob who still continues to do some yeah. professional work as well i saw your film it was amazing um sajini shinde was great uh and i'm just so proud of the journeys you all are having and thank you so much for joining me it was so great thank you man thank, thank you man you. this was a blast thank you so much all right so much. see you bye bye see you man bye bye bye, bye, bye.